This week in Nerf, we've got first party and community new blasters to talk about. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right on into it, let's talk about the Nerf leaks that just happened this last week. There is a new line of rival blasters. These are the Rival Edge series. Now, these are a green line of blasters, kind of similar to the original Raven colors. And uh, important to note is the original post for this is actually gone. The images you can probably find posted around uh, several places on the internet now, but the original post is gone. I don't know why. Uh, this happens occasionally with these leaks, so uh, we'll see if anything happens to this video. But this, as you can see, looks kind of like a Kronos reshell. It uh, has a five round capacity, it appears. It uses a priming slide on the back like the Kronos does, but it appears to have a bolt on there as well to maybe make priming a little bit easier. Um, the aesthetics are a bit different. I gotta say, I, I do dig the kind of smoother lines and less blocky kind of aesthetic that the Kronos had. It's definitely an interesting change. Uh, now, we don't know when this is coming out, how much it'll cost, or any of those kinds of details, just that this is something that appears to exist. Uh, the big thing, though, that really got people talking is one of the images on the back. In the background of that image is what appears to be a full-length rival sniper-style blaster. No idea what it's going to do, how it's going to perform, but... It appears we'll be getting some form of bolt action, maybe a uh, full length rival rifle style blaster. The thing is about that, it'll look cool, I'm sure, and it could be fun to use, but rival doesn't do well at long ranges. So it's going to kind of be like a long strike in my mind that it, it, it's, it looks cool. But that's about where the fun stops. Um, now that's of course excluding, excluding the new updated elite style long strike. I'm talking old school blue. Um, regardless, there's just some interesting things to continue to talk about for this uh, box art. For me, the fact that there's adults on the back of the box is very interesting. Normally it's been kids and then for the Rival series kind of like teens to older teens. And now the Edge series, it looks like those are adults on the back of that box to me. I don't know if they're trying to kind of bring in like target shooters because this appears to maybe come with a target on the back and, and kind of try and get that demographic, maybe something for them to plink around with at home when they can't go to the range. Very well could be the case. So I'm definitely curious about this line and very interested to see the direction that they take it. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye out on that. We'll see when we get an official announcement of any kind and what exactly the line is and how many blasters are in it. Is it just those two that we see on this box or are there going to be more? And what is the purpose of the line? All kinds of questions we have that we can't really answer yet, but uh, I will be curious to see when we can answer them. So let me know your thoughts on this line, what it may be about, and what the focus may be. Let me know down in the comments down below. Let's talk about something else new on the blaster front though, and this comes to us from Project FDL. They released a teaser image of a very compact FDL that had a rev trigger, which, you know, I was very excited about, but this, this is just the first of several posts from Project FDL and the FDL user group on Facebook, a couple of which have been videos of test firing. And there's all kinds of stuff to unpack and talk about here. Um, I can't go into all of it because that would be an entire video in its own right. But there's just some interesting things uh, besides the rev trigger, which I'm all for. Uh, you can actually see like multiple pieces and parts on the workbench uh, when they're firing that looks like they're still in development on something that one of the videos they're shooting short darts, one of the videos they're shooting a, a Dominator mag. Uh, so it's like there's still things in development and different portions that they have to decide on or something. Um, so I don't know when this is going to come out, how much is going to cost, all of that stuff that we don't know yet, but it's just really cool and really fun to see the development process and where it's going to end up. I don't know. And that's really kind of exciting. All I do know is I saw a rev trigger and I said a while back, 
if they put a rev trigger on an FTL, I'd be the first person in line to buy one, so... I guess... dibs? I don't know if that works, but we're just throwing that one out there. Uh, regardless, I, I love seeing this kind of continued push for innovation and, and iteration within a company uh, that has some, they have a very, very uh, hardcore user base that loves their product and, and is fiercely loyal. And I love that. But I love that they are still wanting to continue to step uh, further, further out and try and reach more and more people to grow uh, the, the user base for their product and the interest in their product and all that kind of stuff. So I always like it when companies aren't satisfied with where they're at and want to continue to push and grow and do all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to this. I don't know exactly what it'll be and where it'll end up and all of that stuff, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where that is. So if you've got any speculation or thoughts on it or... Uh, if you saw anything interesting in any of the videos in the FTL user group that you want to share down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because this is something that's super interesting and I cannot wait for it to be here. So let's go ahead and talk about one more thing uh, for the community side of things this week. This is uh, something that I mentioned a while back when the Talon Mags came out that we would need people to start making Talon Mag holders because... If you're just kind of trying to run around, run around with them in pockets and such at games, it's not really that ideal. So Foam Technician appears to be one of the first to get some products out. They have a double stack magazine holder. Now this is not a one on top of the other. It is a side by side mag holder, which uh, I don't know if I'm 100% for just because of the way I grab my mags usually, but it's something that I'm sure functions uh, well, once you're used to grabbing things in a slightly different orientation. Uh, these are meant to be used either upright or uh, gravity down, so that is good because I know a lot of people like to run things facing down so they can pull down, they don't have to worry about stuff riding up high on them. So being able to securely hold them and not worry about them falling out when you're jostling and running, Definitely a plus, definitely something you always want to look for in mag holders like this. Uh, they are running for about $15 a piece right now. That'll hold two mags and come with the molly bars and all of that good stuff. I am, I'm hoping that they will come out with a side oriented magazine draw because I thoroughly enjoy having things on my low back and just pulling them out to the side and, and not having to worry about stuff being in the way up or down or anything like that. So fingers crossed on that one, but regardless, if not, I will probably be picking these up to give them a go and actually have something to hold my Talon mags now. So if you're looking for something for that purpose, this is something that may interest you. Definitely take a look at these. The link to the shop will be down below. But let's go ahead and talk about our mod of the week this week. This week it comes to us from Prickly's Nerf mod, and this is the Laser Strife. It is what appears to be a Nitro uh, laser tag and strife integration. I don't know if there's even more in there. There probably is, and I missed something. But this is a very cool integration that takes uh, some very unique aesthetics and puts them together. You've got the Nitro line, which is very much uh, visibly unique and original in its own right. And then the laser tag stuff, which has its own kind of barrel type and shroud and all that and putting them together. And it creates something that you haven't really seen before in terms of integration. So that's always cool. And they went with a kind of battle damaged and scarred and beat up aesthetic, which while that kind of look isn't my personal favorite, it looks good. It's one of those things that each person has their own aesthetic and you want to try something different here and there. And uh, this kind of adds, I guess, to that sci-fi element, like something maybe used and abused throughout the course of a, a war in like a, a sci-fi movie or something like that. But regardless, there's a bunch of cool stuff going on in here. Uh, it's got the double-sided window cages for the flywheel cage, which is cool to see both sides of them. It's got an ammo counter integrated up into the uh, nitro shell, and also on trigger pull, I believe the LEDs light up in the front, which is pretty cool. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I will link the post down below to that. Give it a look and show them some love. That leaves us with one more thing, and that is the video of the week. This week, it comes to us from Monkeytron Collective, and this is a video, What is Brit Nerf? 
This is like a mini documentary about the UK nerf scene and how it evolved and grew and how the former community of Brit nerf played an integral role in that. So you get to go around to various games and see footage from all these games in the, uh, the UK area and also get to hear from the organizers, the people that put these things into motion or uh, helped put them into motion and help grow other scenes and other games in their area so it continues to grow and get bigger and better and more and more people are involved, which is awesome and just really cool to see some of the behind the scenes and the people who make things happen. Uh, because I've said it before, game organizers often don't get the love that they should. And I really always try to implore people to thank their game organizers and, and let them know how appreciative you are of all the work they do. So this to me is a great kind of ode to the people in the UK that make things happen. So uh, with that said, it's, it's something well worth watching. It's something that, it's a little bit of a lengthy watch, over 20 minutes long, but like I said, it's a mini documentary and it, it really, it's worth your watch. It's worth your time. Uh, you should go over there, let me know I sent you, uh, leave a comment for them, let me know what you think of the video. Give it a watch and learn a little bit about the UK scene if you didn't know anything or want to learn a little bit more. Uh, so with that said, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Thank you, as always, to everyone that watches. The video is going to be right over here, by the way. So you should go click that. Give it a watch, like I said. And uh, as always, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for the future. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.